What's up, my dream comrades? And today we have a very special edition proudly sponsored to you by the Japan Sake and Shochu Makers Association on the topic of Shochu. And this episode, we are joined by Miss Olivia Shea uh, from Kurara, a specialty shop that deals with sake, shochu, and traditional crafts that is located in the heart of Singapore. Hello, Olivia, and Hi, welcome Sean. to the show. Thank you. Um, it is wonderful seeing you again. Uh, but you know, just for the benefit of our viewers and as well as our listeners, uh, why don't you introduce yourself, you know, to all of us? Um, well, hi, I'm Olivia. Uh, I'm a sake sommelier and social advisor at Kurara. Um, I guess pretty much got into sake close to almost coming to 20 years now, probably giving away my age. But um, still look very young. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And uh, got into Sochu about five, six years ago. Okay. Yeah. Five, six years ago. Okay. Mm -hmm. And Sochu has always been, I, mean, I guess, for the last five, six years, has been a, a huge part of your job and profession. Um, for the last two, two years, two and a half years, yes, it's become a large part of my job. Um, prior to that, it was really a, a, a whole discovery journey. Even un until now, six years later, five, six years later, it's still... I'm still discovering a lot about Sochu. Okay, but yeah. I'm sure you'll be able to at least, you know, give us a bit of, uh, a, you know, some insight to, to what Sochu really is, as well as uh, some 101 information. Yep. So, sure. you know, maybe for, for starters, you mm -hmm. could just uh, give a brief outline on what Sochu is, um, you know, what kind of ingredients do they use? So, well, very much, Sochu is a distilled spirit or distilled alcohol from Japan, um, differentiates itself from all other spirits around the world because of the use of koji. Um, and there are two categories of sochu, if we put it that way. The, um, what we would call the uh, otri sochu, uh, which is also the honkaku sochu, go into that a little later, um, and also the kori sochu, which are the ones that uh, um, Continuously distilled, so uh, without a very strong character in them. Right, talking about characters and, mm -hmm. and, and ingredients. Mm. So, is it safe to assume that most of the time, flavors and aroma profile will be very different if you're using a very different type of raw material? Yes, definitely for Honkaku Sochu, mm -hmm. um, because there are um, 55 legally allowed base ingredients that can be used. Wow, 55. 55, I know. Um, it's, That's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot. It's We have the common ones, probably the most common and most popular one. It's like sweet potato. Mm -hmm. So the emo sochu. Emo sochu. Um, and then we have the rice sochu, kome sochu, um, barley, mugi, uh, and then also brown sugar, kokuto sochu. These yes. are probably the ones that are a bit more popular. Most commonly and found. Most commonly and found. Right. But of the Five. Um, there can be things like <laughs> uh, one of the I would say the I shouldn't say the word weird, but you know, most interesting one that I tasted personally, and was also something that got me started on the sochu journey was a daikon sochu. Daikon, yeah. Radish. So that was that was what I wanted to know, or at least yeah. uh, you know, got me interested uh, to, to to know a little bit more about you. Is that how do you actually get into shochu? You know, because it is it is still a, um, I would say I won't say mainstream product. Mm -hmm. So what got you to explore more into shochu? Um, well, I mean, it, when I first encountered uh, in the past, very frankly, I I didn't understand shochu very well. But there was a period of time, about five six years ago, that I got to spend a bit more time in Japan. At that time, I was actually really looking at sake still, but uh, I had a chance to visit a friend's family bottle shop in Yokosuka. Mm -hmm. And that's when I tasted the daikon soju and I went, huh? <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that's a soju from daikon that tasted like daikon. Right. You know, like that grated daikon yeah, that uh -huh. you get with tempura. Or oh, then Yeah, I'm like, huh? Okay. That tastes great, actually. Tastes yes, great. it does. Yeah, oh. uh, very interesting. And so from there, and then since it's a bottle shop, um, I got to taste a lot more. Not just your standard sweet potato and things like that, but right. then I think I, I had things like, uh, um, of course, uh, sesame. 
Black Sesame is mm -hmm. one that I really like also. Um, and then we had some some of the ones that were made with like the herbs and like um, mugwort and things like that. So it got me wondering like, so true, it's really quite interesting. It's not just, it's not, you know, like, there's a lot of character to Sochu. Um, and I also at that point learned that actually Sochu, it's a very casual kind of drink versus how, you know, a lot of us would look at sake or enjoy sake. We're talking about pairings and things like yeah, that nowadays. Yeah. But Sochu is actually very like, casual. Um, and in fact, in Japan, um, Sochu is the most, is pretty much the most popular drink um, yeah. in Japan, among the salary men especially. I mean, I, I asked about statistics with uh, with people in Japan and or at least from JSS, and it's mm. about 50-50% approximately, or at least according to them. Uh, and talking about statistics, yeah. what do you think uh, the, the current guesstimate consumption for shochu is in Asia? Um, if you have the numbers for Singapore, that'd be great, but I, you know, I'm not mm -hmm. holding my breath. <laughs> Well, um, I have to thank, thank NTA. Res, res, um, the numbers were just released today. Okay, okay. This morning. Right. Um, but uh, we're like a distant number five in terms of uh, export. Export for shochu? For, for alcohol, period. Ah, but, okay. Um, right. And uh, in terms of alcohol, uh, shochu, out of all the alcohol, it's not even 10%. Yeah. So no, it's a very small number. The largest, I guess, we can guess, um, is actually whiskey, mm -hmm. followed very closely by sake. Right. So whiskey yeah. is actually taking a oh, the hot yeah. spot right now. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. I guess sake and shochu really need to, you know, yeah. well, work up. <laughs> sake is a close number two to whiskey. Yeah. And then, you know, it's it's the gins and vodka. The gins, the Japanese gins are very popular as well. So it's the gins and then followed by beers before it comes to soju. Yeah, well, talk about competition. <laughs> well, talking about competition, uh, you know, I mean, there, there are lots of other drink categories that are yeah. Yeah, in competition with shochu. Yeah. Even sake is considered a competition in, in a way. Is. But, you know, with misconception just adds on just compounds com compounds that effect mm -hmm. on 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 shochu. Mm -hmm. Shochu and soju is constantly being mis misunderstood, mm -hmm. or, or they 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 just got mistaken. Um, why do you think that there is a popularity with uh, with Korean soju compared to J Japanese shochu? Well, first of all, um, the name itself adds to the confusion because it's soju. For the Korean one, yeah, and then of course sochu for Japan, the Japanese one, um, but they are actually very different, especially the soju that we know of. Um, the soju that we know of, it's actually what is considered a diluted soju, so it starts with a neutral base, mm -hmm. um, so almost like how gin starts, you know, neutral base, yeah, re-rectified, and then what makes it really different is it's really diluted there are additional um and and then they add flavorings and things like that so that includes all your sugar your different kinds of flavors that's why we see them in those little green bottles you know you've got the um i guess what strawberry ones and peach ones yeah. and things like that that's very different so true it's well it is diluted by water from when it's first distilled but usually down to about 25 percent mm -hmm. Um, and then, um, but there's no addition of sugar or flavors. The flavor um, character that we get is from the base ingredient and how, um, you know, when they do the distillation. Yeah, but there's no addition of flavors. You're not allowed to do that. Right. So, so by profile and characteristics, that is one uh, appeal, I guess that's coming from shochu. Mm. Uh, do you think there's any other form of appeal as compared to any other spirits? Um, well, the first, because it's coming from the base ingredients, you mm. get a lot of different characteristics between, depending on what you take. Right. I think the other thing that, at least what I really love about shochu is, um, you know, it's how casual you can drink it, but you can drink it in different ways. 
Traditionally, shochu is diluted, as in when we drink it, we dilute it. But depending on shochu, we can we are talking about different dilution. Like you know, if you're feeling you need a stiff drink, don't dilute it so much. Yeah. You know, okay. and then maybe that's your last drink, the last one. You know, for the night, you might want to dilute it a little more. It really depends on how you feel. Um, at the same time, uh, you know, we can do it dilute it different ways. Yeah. You are warm day, you want something, you can have it on the rocks or on, with cold water. It's a cool day like last night, you know, you could have it warmed, um, you know, with hot water. Uh, or nowadays, um, even just a simple dilution, there's also what we call soda wari, with soda water. Yeah. Yeah. Or, or some with uh, uh, ocha wari, with, with oolong cha. Yeah, oolong cha. Yeah, yeah so that's right. it's very casual. Yeah, and it actually works well, um, particularly the ones which don't, um, you know, um, works well also with cocktails. Yeah, just a very simple cocktail. So, talking about diversity and, and you know, you just gave quite a bit of insight in terms of uh, how you can drink it, mm -hmm. you know, and it's a very casual drink. Mm. Do you think because of that diversity or ways to drink it, would the, the, the popularity ever match any other drink or, you know, even uh, with sake, for example, well, its other counterpart? I mean, I certainly hope so. Um, although I think it's, it's, it's a bit of a challenge. We need to do a lot more. Uh, but, you know, with how versatile it is with, you know, um, I think if we share a lot more about Sochu, um, let people know more about Sochu, you know, so that it's not, it's not so scary in that sense. Because also some people think that, oh, soju, it's very high alcohol. Yeah, yeah. which but is it, incorrect, actually. It is. It is because we dilute it. Yeah. You know, and then exactly. it goes back down to actually lower than sake. <laughs> sometimes. Yeah. Not always, uh, okay. sometimes. When it's not made by me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, um, yeah. So, I mean, I do hope it gains, you know, its popularity. Um, definitely going with the recent like uh, workshops or masterclasses that we've done uh, recently, uh, we've seen a lot of interest. Mm. And, uh, definitely a lot of people who came to us who've never tried soju, yeah. but walked away actually liking I, them. Yeah. So that's great. And I think I agree. Um, I just came back from Japan, mm. obviously, mm. and you know, we were on a, a alumni um, study tour. Mm -hmm. So there was a lady in, the, in our group and she doesn't drink, well, she doesn't drink shochu per se, she drinks only sake. Mm -hmm. Because she feels that oh, it's, it's a distilled spirit, it's very high in alcohol. Right. After she attended a very short seminar in, in JSS, mm. she was mind blown because there was one particular shochu that she had, I think it was Dayami. Ah. You know, it's, it's a bit like having your very first souvenir blanc moment. Yeah, mm. that's what she felt because she was like, oh my God, this is... Lychee and roses and tropical fruits. She was quite blown away. And she, and thereafter, she was like inquiring, hey, you know, is there going to be a shochu class sometime soon? Because <laughs> <laughs> she's actually interested yeah. to, to find a bit more. Well, I think also we're seeing more and more of these, um, well, for the lack of a better word, modern style shochu that's being produced by, mm -hmm. the, by the distilleries. Some of them even very um, established distilleries because they want to try and open up the market. So some of them are a bit more uh, aromatic, you know, um, lighter as well. Yeah. So yes, in a way, targeted at the female market. Or the younger That's, generation. Or the younger generation, yeah. yes. So yeah, definitely a lot more that's yeah. coming out. So that will probably help. I mean, yeah. I'd say, well, if, if, my, if my humble opinion matters at all, I think it's it's a bit like that epiphany I mentioned about Sauvignon Blanc yeah. when, you know, being back in the 80s and 90s whereby New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc came to power. Oh, yeah. <laughs> back then, nobody knew Sancer was a Sauvignon Blanc yep. and, you know, yep. this was a bit of a revelation. So I think this is something that's, yeah. that will be good for the market for sure. Yeah, I mean, yeah. definitely. And then, you know, once, once the door is open, then no, the floodgates are open. Okay, not the floodgates. <laughs> <laughs> you know, then people will go discover more. I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about some noob questions <laughs> that you, you might get from consumers. Um, and you know, we've Googled this. 
Yeah. Should I even be seeing the word Google? But you know, we, we've researched this and then there are lots of uh, questions from, from newbies mm -hmm. whereby they're often asked and curious about shoju. Mm -hmm. So, for example, would you get a hangover if you drink shoju? Well, in moderation, if you're drinking in moderation compared to other alcohols or spirits, it's probably going to let you, you have a lower chance of getting a hangover. Yeah. Um, but if you're going to be consuming like three isho, I don't think it, you're going to get a hangover yeah. no matter what. You know? yeah. But reason because uh, for so true, there's no additives. So it's a distilled spirit. Yep. Once it's distilled, um, then you know you don't add additives like sugar or flavorings and add to that. Mm -hmm. um, then the chances of getting a hangover it's lower because it's the other additives that actually usually gives you the hangover. That's that's true. Yeah. Um, I also think that hydration, hydration, oh, and hydration yes. matters a lot. Yeah. So I think with the way we drink shochu, you know, with all the dilution and all that, yeah. I think that yeah. should actually minimize that. That too. I mean, like for myself, I usually start with a stronger one. And then as the night goes... Yeah, you seem like that kind I, of person. <laughs> I'll, pour, I'll, I'll, I'll dilute it a bit more and more. Okay, okay. Yeah. Well, first myth busted. Yeah. Um, what about umeshu? You know, because we, <clears throat> we drink a lot of umeshu as well. Mm. Is umeshu a shochu? Umeshu is not a shochu. Uh, umeshu is actually made with an alcohol base and the plants steeped in it mm -hmm. usually with sugar yep and then over at least six months to a year where the flavors have been extracted that becomes umeshu right so the base of umeshu a lot of the umeshu out there starts with a neutral spirit or it could be sake right or it could be sake very uh very r rarer than the rest because sake as i'm sure you know Sean, it's so much lower in alcohol. Mm -hmm. So it's harder to make umeshu using them, but definitely there is. Um, there are also sochu-based umeshu, but they're definitely not sochu. Sochu-based umeshu. Yeah, yeah. yeah so they sense. are still liquors. Yeah. Okay, Umeshu cool. will be a liquor. Yeah. Right. Back to another question that we were talking about earlier mm -hmm. in this podcast. Mm -hmm. um, Honkaku shochu. Mm. You said that you were going to share a little bit more about... It. yeah. More about Honkaku Shochu and the differences between just not average so Shochu. Right. So, as mentioned earlier, um, Shochu can be divided into two categories. Mm -hmm. uh, one which we call the Otsuri Shochu, which is also the same as Honkaku Shochu. And then the other, uh, or it's also called, it's kind of like called Type B Shochu. Uh, and then the other one, which is Type A, and that's the Kori Shochu. And so in terms of distillation, the biggest difference is that uh, Honkaku Sochu is single distillation, mm -hmm. Otsu, pretty much. Uh, whereas uh, Kori Sochu is continu continuous. Continuous, right. So yeah. it's more, that so one is more like a, a vodka. More almost coming to a neutral spirit like right. vodka. Right. So Honkaku Sochu, what, uh, what it, is it? You know, or what does it have to, what, how is it considered a Honkaku Sochu? Uh, so, first of all, as I mentioned, single distillation pot still uh, made with any of the 55 legally approved raw ingredients uh -huh. or yeah, raw materials. Um, and it has to be bottled below 50. 45% mm. ABV. Mm -hmm. Right, yeah. So there are a couple of like legal yes, legalities that, that you have to follow. Mad, yes, and Honkaku, the name itself actually translates to authentic. Yeah. Right. Or Japan made. <laughs> right. Okay, good. So well, that answers another question. Well, we have two more to go. Okay. Um, some people think that uh, drinking shochu will get you fat. Mm hmm Right, um, and some would, you know, have some might hear here say that oh, it might have sugar, might not have sugar. So which is it? So true, does not have sugar because you are not allowed to put any additives to it. 
The only thing that a distillery would add is water mm -hmm. to dilute it from when it was first distilled. Yeah. Yeah, that's the only thing you add. So no sugar. That we're right. That we're clear. Um, so since it's low sugar, low calorie, yes, it's going to be very beneficial to those who are on a diet. Yeah. Now, however, when we do dilution, it can be diluted with water, ice, or, you know, um, as I mentioned earlier, oolong tea. Oolong tea. Um, you know, soda some water. soda water. Yeah. And then there's also a very popular one, Kelpis. Oh yeah, Kelpis. So I've I mean, imagine if you choose to dilute every single glass with Kelpis. Uh, that will get you fat. Oh so. yeah. <laughs> and of course, you know, when you drink, you kind of snack. <laughs> so it depends on what you mm. eat too, right? Right, right, right. Yeah, so, so don't blame the sochu. Yeah, so it actually doesn't matter whether it's sochu or any other spirits because much like like London dry gin or even scotch whiskey. No sugar. No sugar yep. inside it. So there you go. Mm -hmm. Uh, last question you know, mm. before we wrap up. Can I age shochu on my own? Uh, I would say that is yes and no. Um, okay. Definitely, you know, if you have, it's a distilled spirit, it does kind of last a bit longer, longer than sake in that sense. Um, however, it does change. It does mellow out. Um, kept it for too, keep it for too long just with any other spirits, you would see that it has changed. Um, if it's open, then it's been exposed to air. Yeah. The changes will happen even more. Flavors might change. Yeah, I think the flavors actually tend to get weaker over time. It does time. get weaker. Yeah. Sometimes it adds a certain sourish tone for some reason. Mm -hmm. um, however, so no in that sense. But again, why did I say yes? Because... Um, if you know what you're doing. If you know what you're doing. <laughs> you oh know gosh, doing. Sean knows me very well. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, if you know, like for example, um, there are some sochu that are sold in like the urban pots or the mino pots, what they call the mino pots, yeah. which, you know, pot tree where um, it actually has like more or, space or, or, you yeah. know, that allows air to go through. Mm -hmm. And that actually, when when you age it in them, it actually kind of smoothens out your so yeah. a bit more, like mellows it out. So yes, um, like what I do is that I have one of those pots from a previous bottle that I bought, or a previous pot of sochu that I got before. Finished that, kept the bottle. And then if I have a sochu that might be a little too sharp young, I actually pour it in there and let it age for a short while. Oh, okay. And then that, ooh, then it gets like, it smoothens it out. Yeah. And of course, it also allows me to do the other thing, which is what we call my wari, which is to pre-dilute my sochu. So okay. after it's kind of mellowed out, I think it's ready. I actually add water to it. And so lets it kind of blend even better. Yeah. Before I so, it, it. so it takes time to, for it to like yeah. um, assimilate yep. or marry. Yeah. yeah. So actually, my wari is something that show, especially if you're doing it for a friend, you know, it really right. shows how much you care because of the extra effort. Fair made. enough. Yeah. Well, long story short, uh, <laughs> can you eat shochu on your own unless you're Olivia? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> right? Unless you're you. Well, but um, I guess that's also a good time to wrap up our episode and, mm -hmm. you know, thank you for coming for, for, for this edition's uh, shochu episode. Uh, but to wrap up or to end off this session, What's your current favorite way of drinking shochu, or your favorite shochu for the matter? Uh, well, I actually currently on my table is a kokuto shochu. Kokuto. Yeah. Okay. So, so it's a uh, ichinojo um, kokuto shochu, which um, very very strong brown sugar mm -hmm. flavor. So, so caramel. Yeah, very sort of... caramelly and all. So what I like about it, it's. It's really one that allows me to, if it's a hot day, have it on the rocks. If it's cool like last night, have it with hot water. Yeah. Nice. And flavors would be different, I guess. Uh, yes. When it's in hot water, it's a bit richer. Oh, um, it brings out that, you know, like almost that warmth of brown sugar, almost close to like a gula malacca. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Gula malacca for, for, for some of our viewers or listeners, it's... Uh, 
Is it Malay? Malay dessert? Coconut. Gula Malacca is the coconut sugar. The coconut sugar, yeah. yeah very coconut. thick and rich. Yeah. Right. Okay. I've got to try it one day for sure. <laughs> But right, so that takes us to the end mm-hmm. of our episode. Again, once again, thank you for, for joining us. Thank you for having and me. And if you all would like to listen to more of such content, uh, please remember to follow and like and subscribe. And we will see you at the next episode. Thank you very much. Bye.